Hello, it's Sarah Kite at UT Extension at Green County, and I'm going to share with you some steps on how to use a water bath canner. If you've never used one, it's super simple, it's very easy to use, so I'll be happy to help you and answer any questions that you have. So this is a water bath canner. It's very big. It comes with a lid, and in a water bath canner, you need to have the insert. The insert is like a basket with handles, and you drop it right into your water bath cleaner, like so, to get started. That way, when your product is done, you can easily drop it in, take it out, whatever you need to do. So, when you're doing a strawberry jam with powdered pectin, is the recipe I'm going to share with you today, you need to make sure that you have water in your canner. How much water is the question? So you have your jar you're about to fill with your jam. So I'm going to put this in my water bath canner and I'm going to get a ruler. And I need to measure one inch, one to two inches above my jar. And that's how much water should be in your canner. So you need a ruler to get started. And I've got the recipe on here that you can definitely print off and follow. So this recipe makes nine to 10 half pint jars, which is this size. And it's about five and a half cups of crushed, fully ripened strawberries or three quart boxes. So after you crush your fruit, then you'll measure it. You get five and a half cups. One package of powdered pectin. Question that always I hear is, can I use liquid pectin? No, the recipe calls for powdered. You need to use powdered pectin. If you have liquid pectin on hand, then find a recipe that uses liquid pectin. That way it won't be too syrupy when you're done. So follow the recipe just like it is. And then eight cups of sugar. If you want to reduce your sugar, then you need to find a recipe that already has reduced the sugar. So step number one, sterilize your jars. How do you do that? Just take the jar and put it in your dishwasher. And you can reuse your rings every year, but you'll have to get brand new lids. These lids are only made for one time use. So there's a sticky residue on the back and it's used one time. So these you'll have to get a box. Um, I just got mine at the store. Get a box of lids, reuse the jar, and you can reuse the ring every year. So sterilize your jars, prepare the two piece can lid according to the manufacturer's instructions. Two pieces. Go ahead and sort and wash all your berries, remove the stems and caps, and then crush your berries with a potato mash or a fork, whatever you want to. If you want a good jam, make sure you have good berries. So take out all the berries that might be bruised or not looking too good. And then measure the crushed strawberries into your kettle. So get a nice big kettle, not your water bath, but another stock pot, and measure your berries into there that you've crushed, then add the pectin and stir. You're gonna get it going to a high heat and stir it constantly, a nice strong rapid boil. Add a sugar, add your sugar, and then keep stirring and heat again till a full bubble boil. And then let this boil hard for one minute. Stirring constantly, don't want your, your jam to burn in the bottom. And then take it from the heat and the top of your, your jam in the pot will have nice little foam bubbles. Um, you can get a spoon, you have different tools. I like to use my, my measuring tool here, the other end, and I'll just go through there and I'll scrape the foam off. And then you'll take your jars, and they have these fantastic funnels that fit right in there nicely. And you would ladle all your jam into here and that keeps the sticky jam off the jar. So ladle your, your jam in there. And then you want to measure a quarter inch headspace. This tool has a nice stair step on it and you want to measure it to a quarter inch. Headspace is very important. So I find the quarter inch and I put it on the inside of the jar and I'll fill it up to meet that little stair step. And then once I do, I'll get a nice moist paper towel and I'll just wipe the rim to make sure there's no sticky residue. I'll go ahead and put my lid on and then the ring. And you just wanna finger tight your jar. Set it aside so you have them all done. 
you want to make sure you get your big water bath canner on the heat high so you can get a nice boil. Once you do, they have these fantastic jar grippers. You can take them, use that to grip your jar, and then you're going to place it into your water bath canner. Remember, the water needs to be above your lid, one to two inches. Go ahead and put those jars all in the water bath canner. And then you're gonna set your time for five minutes. So after the water gets to a boil, put my jars in it, let it get to a boil again, and then I'm gonna process them for five minutes. Here in McMinn County, we don't have to worry about altitude, but if you're at higher elevations, you'd have to adjust your processing time for that. Then after five minutes is up, I'll take my fancy tool and I'll just pull them out of the water and put them on a cooling rack or a towel. Don't tip them and dump the water out because you don't want your product inside to get to the seal. Just let them cool, let them set for 24 hours, and then your jam is ready to put in your shelves. Save them in your pantry, eat them right away, whatever you choose to do. And that's how you make jam using a water bath canner. Hope you enjoy. Submit your questions if you have any canning questions. And I'll, happy, I'll be happy to answer all that you have. This is Sarah Kite with UT Extension, and I hope you have a fantastic afternoon.